guys, Coach Chris with Silverback Performance, where we specialize in the throwing athlete and the baseball pitcher. Today I'm going to be going over balance. Uh, everybody that uh, usually tries to train an athlete wants to talk about balance, but do we understand that there's many different planes and different views and angles that we have to understand when it comes to balance? So today I'm going to be going over that. Hopefully I give you a better understanding of the approach that we use here when we train our athletes and how we get our athletes to really understand and be able to make adjustments when they feel that they might be off balance or um, maybe are losing the control and the power that they might have. So stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy this. All right guys, so the first thing we wanna assess or go over is pretty much when your athlete comes set or when he gets on the mound. What we're gonna talk about is we're only gonna talk about the stretch because whether you do the wind or not, you end up in this position, all right? Another thing we wanna go over is that some athletes will land a certain way, and that's okay. Um, we're just assessing the very basic. The theory that we use is balance, control, power. So without balance, you won't be able to have that good control or control the upper body as you start to rotate. And without balance and control, you won't be able to have the power necessary or the stability and the control necessary to put that, uh, that power that we want to into the ball. So the first thing we're gonna go over is pretty much how you stand. What I usually see with, with uh, athletes that are usually around nine to all the way up to even 13 sometimes is when they come set, they come set with their feet too close. And that's gonna be the first thing that I'm gonna look at. So is your athlete coming set with those feet really close? Because what this is gonna do is it's gonna put us in an unathletic position, all right? Uh, all I need is a big breeze to come by and blow me by and I won't have any balance. I'll just be all over the place. So what we want to do in this in this scenario is we want to tell the athlete just to go about hip width. And we always want to think we want to be athletic at all times. So if you're on the field, be as athletic as you can. So even on the rubber, we can be in an athletic position right here when we come set. So usually we get to sign, you come in and you come set. Once you stop, you should be in this position. Now I'm doing this on flat ground, but if we were on the mound, we'll have a slope and what that'll do is it'll kind of put this leg in a bent or somewhat loaded position, as long as I can control that. That'll help with, with uh, creating that pelvic tilt that we want to help us stay closed as we go forward. So this would be the first angle that I will look at. Is the athlete coming with their feet too close? And if they are, we want to kind of set them up to where they're comfortable and just come about hip width. Some players can come uh, parallel so they can have their feet straight. Or what I like to do is have them stagger just a little bit. And we're gonna talk about when they land. So obviously we came here, we already assessed whether they started with their feet or not. And there's a lot of things that go in between them, but we're just talking about certain positions that we wanna look at. So obviously we want the athlete to go down the mountain, we want them to go close. But when they land, what I'm looking at in this position is, when it comes to balance is, did they come and land across themselves too much? What happens when they come across themselves is, I call this tight roping. All right? If you also saw somebody walking on a building, they don't turn left or right. And that's because they don't have anything to, to stabilize themselves as they do that. So some guys can pitch like this. So you have like in the major leagues, you have Justin Berland, who's really good at coming across and things like that. But when it comes to youth athletes, they don't have that stabilization in the hips to be able to do this. So um, what this will cause is when I land, I see a lot of coaches, they'll yell at them and say, hey, you're throwing sidearm. What's really happening is though, that as the athlete starts to rotate, they start to tilt excessively, okay? And because they tilt excessively, what happens is the head gets away from the arm. You can see right now, I'm struggling to hold it a little bit. So as they start to rotate, the head starts to go away, and then the arm comes out long. And then that's when you see this right here. So, um, another thing we want to assess is they already landed here, right? So maybe they did land here. Are they in an athletic position again? So are they, is their head right underneath their hip or are we keeping this uh, chin slightly in front of the belly button? We always want to be in an athletic position. So what I want or what I would like for the athletes to do is think about this heel. So if you line this heel up and we just step out, this gives me a good position to control that, uh, that force I'm creating into this leg. And you see right there, I didn't fall off. I have a lot more stability as I rotate and control the top. So, um, the second part of balance is, and I kind of mentioned it there was, we talked about the landing, now we're gonna talk about the hips. 
So when I land, I don't want to land too upright, right? This is a major problem. This is why one of the first things we teach our athletes here is how to squat and the, other, the relationship of the hips and the knees. So we want the athlete to still be in an athletic position, right? Sometimes they're too upright. There, when they get there, they're not gonna have much power in their legs. So we want them to stay down like that when they rotate, they have something to get into. The easiest way to, to understand this position is if you were to tell your athlete to get into this position, just tell them to hold the back. They usually would stand the right way. So, if you look at this now, we just take the, the elbow out, and we take the glove out, right? We're in the same position as we uh, wanna fire that ball. So, that would be the third position that I'll look at. So first, I assess whether they got on the mound and put their feet together. Second, I'm gonna assess where they land. Did they land too far across or did they land too open? After that, I'm gonna assess whether their hips are in the proper position or if they're in an athletic position, all right? And then that will pretty much, if you can fix those three things, you're setting yourself up to have a lot more control as you start to rotate the top of the body. So, the other thing we wanna talk about is how far out you get. So, sometimes we get athletes that wanna stride way too far out, or old school coaches might used to say to their kids, hey, get out the lane for your body. What I want you guys to think is, if your athlete cannot lunge that far, right, without falling, we don't want him to get that far out. So less is better. You can still throw a ball pretty hard here versus you getting all the way out here and trying to throw the ball. So start your athlete off with their stride being somewhat short. Get them to understand this and feel this position right here. And then once uh, we, we have good control and stability in these positions, then we can see how much further they go out. They don't necessarily need to go out that far to throw the ball hard. So I hope this video helped. Please like, share, and subscribe if you, if you found some value in this. I'm trying to put my, as many videos as I can out for you guys, and let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Once again, here at Silverback, we focus on the throwing athlete and the baseball pitcher. So thank you for watching. God bless. I hope to see you guys soon.